Then, yeah, just wear the beanie. That's it. That's pretty solid. I feel good about that. That's a good way to start this. Get the attitude up high, you know. Good trade two J's if you could become Wolverine. Where are you getting all this information? I definitely heard some some rumors about it. Are you still going? For, I, I can't get goosebumps thinking about it because it's like you can hear them get the car. I was going to qualify and I was going to drive it out the racetrack. Just threw the hood over the ditch and longest employee of Knox. You did some digging there, huh? Look, FD has some absolutely incredible merch. And to add to that, they now have this. Yes, that is right. You can look a little bit more like me. I won't, I, I don't want you to look completely like me. That would just be weird. But if you head over to shopfd.com or check out the link down below, you can get your very own Teal Toque. Comes with sticker, comes with super cool packaging. Yes, yes, I'm hidden somewhere in there. Lots of fun references back to the show and my Canadian roots. And those stickers, different rarities. So you might be the person that gets the one in 500 gold toque. Head over to shopfd.com. Use podcast 24, save yourself 20%. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Outer Zone, the official podcast of Formula Drift. My name is Jacob Geddens, and uh, with me today, somebody, if, you, if you've listened to the show since the beginning, you already know who this is. If, you ha- if you've just started with the show, you actually already know who this is. Uh, this is Kyle Mayhew, who is the editor of the show, essentially. He is, yep. I'm supposed to be one of the last people <laughs> to review it, but he is actually the person <laughs> who reviews it before it goes out. Yep, I've so, seen every episode. <laughs> this is true. You get to see it before yeah. anybody else does. <laughs> you get to see right. inside info. All the all the the BS that starts in the episodes, the trying to get things set up and yep, the yeah, the internet issues, all that stuff I get to enjoy. So there there has been more fixes and things hidden in this show than I, I think almost anybody listening would even know. I mean, I think that's just the nature of the beast, right? Like when you're trying yeah. to do all this stuff remote and like get guests from all over the world. It's kind of just part of it, right? Yeah, and what, so from your opinion, what episode What episode do you think was the most pain in the ass? Yeah, I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Ken, I don't know you, but that episode was very difficult. <laughs> great, great episode. Like yeah. all things considered, great. Like the, the talking points were really good. Uh, it was just, it was a good episode. But the audio sync changed 30 times, 40 well, that, times. Like. So that was the problem was like, I kept having to try to like, as, as the viewers probably know, we tried to do as little editing as possible so that people don't think that we're trying to cut stuff out. Yeah. Um, but in that episode, I kept having to cut the clips to resync Ken's lips <laughs> to his, uh, to his voice. And it was just like, I think that one took me like two days to get it to the point where we were, uh, acceptable. We'll say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I would say on a perfect episode, uh, there's no editing whatsoever. There's there's a cut yeah. at the beginning and a cut at the end, and that's the entire episode. But I think we've only had one, maybe two guests that have ever come back to us and said, hey, I need to cut something out or I need to add something in, and that's it. It's been very rare that that I've heard about it, that you've asked me to do it after the fact. I think it was only one person, and it was because just uh, the episode was coming out before a public announcement. And yeah. Yeah. There, there was one guest who asked us to add something in. They forgot to say something like, That's "Oh, right. can we just record this really quick yeah. and, and add that in?" But yeah, I, I think you'd have to, you'd have to. Really, the only way you're going to be able to tell is if you go and check all the YouTube videos, and then you might be able to tell. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, like, I think we have a pretty good track record with that stuff. And honestly, most of the recordings have been pretty good. It's only when it's the time zone stuff, right? Like when it's somebody yeah. all, all the way over in Europe or when you're on the road or something like that, but it's been, it's been pretty good. Or uh, there are big storms or hurricanes coming through <laughs> that seem to affect things, but. Yeah. I, I, I also want to give a, a quick shout out to the other person that works their ass off on the show, which is Jay. Uh, Jay's the audio engineer. Uh, he has put up with audio issues <laughs> left, right, and center. He's, yeah. he's the main reason why we ship mics out to all the guests uh, because he's like, look, can we just try and make something consistent? Because like the, the audio quality, if we can at least run the same mic, it, it helps him with presets. It helps him dial things in and make sure the sound is uniform. So uh, he does I'm, a lot of work. <laughs> I'm hoping he has an easier time. We both have the same mic now. Yeah. So that should be a yeah. little bit easier. This this should be one of the best sounding episodes. A knock on wood. All <laughs> things going to shoot ourselves in the foot with that one. <laughs> I know, I know. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been good. It's been 
I mean, we're, I think, almost episode 90 now. That's what uh, I was going to say. Like, I can't believe that we're almost at 100 episodes. Like, that's uh, that's wild. It doesn't yeah. feel like we've gone through that many. No, no, it really doesn't. Uh, it's it's been It's been pretty crazy. There's only a handful of pro drivers we have left to talk to. Most of them are, uh, I mean, the ones I can name off the top of my head are Diego Higa, uh, Jonathan Castro. I'm sure I could go through the rest of the list and find all of them, but those are the two off the top of my head. I got the list in front of me. I should run through it. Uh, and there's not too many people that we've that we've done multiples of, unless they won rounds. Obviously, like uh, yeah, uh, Connor and uh, Tom. No, Tommy only had one, right? Yeah, I think uh, they, there's the po- the podium show, which they oh the podium shows. Done. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like, but if you're winning, yeah, you deserve it. more than one episode. So yeah, and and yeah. honestly, like the the podium shows are probably my favorite. Uh, they, I was worried about how they would turn out just with the fact that like there's a fast turnaround time and with the mic quality, right? Like we were just yeah. talking about audio issues, but those have, I mean, knock on wood, I'm going to jinx you for uh, <laughs> Irwindale, but they've been pretty good so far. So yeah, that's, that's the only, those are the only shows that I am the only one who works on them. Yeah. And that's simply because one, I don't want to have to wake you guys up and work at, you know, two in the morning on a Saturday. It's, it's, it's not fair. I don't mind if I do it. And it's just, it's just speed. I could, e- I, I know if I asked you guys, you would, because there's been multiple occasions where that's happened. <laughs> where <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> this got delayed. This guest canceled. This happened. This mic got lost. I, we have to literally edit this on, you know, the Tuesday afternoon or the late Monday night. This, this one will be a late Monday night. <laughs> I was going to say it's Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> it is Monday night. It is Monday night. So uh, some clarity on that to, to kind of put it, all in the perspective for everybody. Uh, I know I, I probably mentioned it in the, the show notes of our throwback episode to Matt Field, which a lot of people liked. Uh, I got a, some really cool Good. feedback on that. So I, I was happy. I liked going through it, to be honest, and kind of trying to find some like old footage from him to throw mm-hmm. in there. And I learned a lot more about him than I knew. So My interview skills are <laughs> so much better now. <laughs> Oh my a lot God. less swearing. I'm going to tell you. I was like, do I put beeps in here or do I just let it ride? But I, yeah, we we did warn people, but yeah, it was yeah. Uh, it was very different. But yeah, uh, the the reason you and I are doing this one, uh, always good to to chat. Of course, our both of our lives have been insanely hectic, and and we'll get into all those stories here in a moment. Uh, we had a couple of guests that I mean, guys are getting ready for Irwindale. Drivers are in different countries. I've had three Amazon packages lost. I forgot it was prime prime week. Oh, so no. it means all shipping is delayed. And then, uh, yeah, just, just trying to get people on is it's not easy. It's a lot of coordination because you're dealing with time zones, you're dealing with other countries, you're dealing with shipments, but you know, there's obviously ways we could do it easier, but I think the show quality, the audio quality, uh, video quality would suffer massively if we cut those corners. So, that's, which is that's kind of doing at that point, right? Like it doesn't no. really pay off. And I feel like I've become such a stickler now for <laughs> for high quality audio that Same. if I didn't do it, if it if we had a, a drastic drop in it, I would I would probably be really upset. So. Nice. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you've had a, a rough couple of weeks between moving <laughs> to a new country, state, and then yeah. having two big storms roll through right as you're trying to get set up. So I don't imagine that made uh, coordinating podcasts easier. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. We yeah. had a we had about a month backlog at one point where we had most of September off, where we had everything yeah. pretty much recorded, got ahead, knew that my move was happening, knew that that was you know everything was was going to happen when it did. And then I had a bunch of travel back to back to back. There was a bunch of, the nice thing is FD had rounds. So we had those shows to come out with, which was great. And then, yeah, it just, with the hurricane, everything else. I mean, just thankfully I didn't lose internet or power. Uh, our area got super, super lucky, but obviously there's, there's people everywhere that have it significantly worse than I do. The The worst thing that I had is I couldn't record. How was it? Just, just, <laughs> Just no, the internet, although it was here, was really bad and unstable because I, I went from fiber, which was phenomenal. We had a, an industrial, basically fiber connection at the old house and studio, and now I'm on coax. So 
it's uh, a little more sketchy than I'm grown used to over the last five years. Which people wouldn't know, but behind the scenes, you and I have battled internet issues like <sighs> pretty much since we've known each other. Yeah. <laughs> so well, we finally had it in a good spot and then unfortunately had to get <laughs> we changed. Had one but, good year. One yeah, good year yeah. where you had fiber, Solid. I had yeah. fiber, everything was phenomenal. Uh, some background stuff too. I don't know if you know if people want it, to hear the background stuff. But yeah, like, I mean, we might as well go no, for it. Why not? We, we work off a Synology NAS system. Uh, so there's a, essentially a small server that has every piece of footage, every podcast episode, every show note, literally everything that I've done in drifting since, man, 2016. I was going to say if, there's stuff from the teens in there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The first FD events, it's all in there. It is fully backed up. Don't worry. If that ever yeah. fails, crashes I, or whatever, I can lose three drives. I think it is on that Synology, and that whole Synology is backed up somewhere else externally. Uh, but we work off of that, so it's secure. So we're not paying a massive amount in like Google or Dropbox storage. And then you can access, I can access, Jay can access. Yeah, Anybody almost can real get time. In. Yeah. So the upside is uh, we can do that. It can go wherever. I don't have to worry about it. The downside is it's only as fast as the slowest connection in the sequence. Yeah. So when I was here, my upload is maybe 40 up on a good day. So it could only be as fast as that. Uh, when I was back at the other place, I had a two gigabit uh, with two and a half gig networking. So basically two gig was the max and you had gig. So it was crazy fast. Yeah, and these episodes, uh, for context, I mean, they some of them, the files, we've got, what, 20, 30 gigs of raw footage that has yeah. to get synced up between the two of us. So It's yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's but, a lot. But. I mean, we've made it work. You have a good connection now. I can see right now we're, we're nice and stable. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. It's good. And the, the NAS is in a faster spot. Not as fast as we're used to, but uh, I'm still working on some, some things to, to get that sorted, but... We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. But it's I mean, been, uh, yeah. Speaking of fast, we're coming up real quick to Irwindale. Huh? Ooh, good like transition. Like that was good. Yeah. It was. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, what, are you, what are your feelings on Irwindale this year? Um, so I'm excited because I'm going to be there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, so that's, uh, you know, a little selfish. Um, I don't know. I, I like the fact that the championship isn't completely decided, right. <laughs> um, but that, you know, it's, it's a, a leaning uh, towards James fairly strongly. Um, but I don't know, like, like I said, I haven't seen uh, many events in person, so it's kind of, uh, I've got a lot of opinions about it more on that side. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been kind of a crazy year. There's been dominance from James, but on the other side of it, there's been like, there's been so much up and down throughout the roster. And I think we have a couple of drivers coming back that we haven't seen for a few rounds, Vaughn being one of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of excited for that and to see kind of um, how that disrupts the rankings, right? Because Irwindale is one of those tracks where um, anything can happen like any year. So, yeah, the, I, I, I don't want to say foregone conclusion. So I, I guess to, That's to I clarify. Think, yeah. To clarify, I, and I did, I checked this with Sage, I checked this um, with Kevin as well. Essentially, James needs to be ready to battle is, is the best way to explain it. So he needs to make it through the burnout box and, and kind of like get up to the line, be ready to go. Now, most people would say that's a foregone conclusion. That's what's going to happen. Go back to Irwindale last year. That, because, that I was just about to say because, you know. That almost didn't happen. Right. Yeah. We, how soon we forget the, the kickflip that, you know, turned drifting on its side. So then from that perspective, do you, if you're James, now I know James isn't the type of person to take things easy, but mm -hmm. would you maybe not run so many practice laps and just kind of make sure that you're getting to that line? Or do you treat it like every other event where you are there to win the event, no matter what? Uh, what with so a bang? I can, I can put it in the perspective of, seeing James win a championship in Irwindale, I, I can't remember if it was 2018 or 2019, but they unloaded, it was a very similar scenario. He only needed to make it so far, you know. They unloaded, they prepped everything, they practiced, they did everything like it was a normal event. I remember someone taking a photo, because this is when he was with Ford House, and there was like four spare front bumpers at Irwindale, wrapped, perfect, ready to go, sitting there. And they're okay. like, this, 
Like, there is no reason for this. There is absolutely no reason. It's just, I think it's a lot of the mindset of like, no, you come and you run the event like it's any other event. Because if you don't, the, you know, the tortoise and the hare, there's so many examples. That's where the you moment you don't trap. is yeah. exactly is when there's an issue, that comfortability. And like, I'm not saying that's what happened last year, but you know, it, it, anything can happen in drifting as, as I've been quoted saying more times than I'm probably <laughs> proud of, but that's, what's crazy about it is that scenario. If that, you know, if RTR didn't get that car together and that was this year, it's, it's a re, it's a realistic scenario that something happens and the car cannot show up for top 32. Um, so on that note, then with the fact that he's going to de- going to be ready to battle, do you have a wild card, um, that you see coming in that might make it difficult for him or for OD to maintain up in the, up in the points? So I got the bracket pulled up now. Um, so I can kind of take a look at it. So Odie's got, uh, a seating, basically a seating battle first. And I'm just looking at where James is at. Him and James could meet in top four. So realistically, let's say that happens. So he's going to have a seating battle and then it's going to be either Andy Haitley or Jonathan Castro. Either, I mean, Heatley or Haitley is due. Castro, we all know at any moment can turn it on and just yeah. decimate people. So that's tough. And then, you know, his other brackets are Chris versus seating or Turk versus Nick Novak. Nick Novak won last year and Ryan Turk also very much do and has done well at this track before. So not easy, not easy at all. I, I don't want to take anything away from the championship, but I, I also want to make sure that things are exciting for people. Um, the chances of, of Odie not getting second is pretty slim. Uh, I actually forgot to do the math to understand if it's completely impossible. <laughs> yeah. I don't I think so. I didn't pull up the bracket, to be honest. That's why, yeah. I'll yeah, there's, there's uh, uh, I mean, it is possible Frederick Osbo could, could do it. There's 74 points. So it's 566 for James Dean right now, 492 for Odie, and then Freddie's 436. So yeah, there's there's a fairly close gap in there. I think the real story that we all have to watch out for is Hiro Manoa versus Frederick Osbo for third. I don't think Manoa could take second. Because no. Manoa's battle, seating battles with Simon, right? Right. Yeah. So that's... So and Simon, there's... If yeah. Simon can turn it on at any round and Simon is due for the top box, uh, top of the box too pretty soon. So uh, that's that was the next battle I was going to bring up because it has implications for um, that top three in the championship. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Manoa, Olsen, top 32. That's wild. Uh, I mean, people forget Olsen took fourth last year. He right. almost, he actually statistically had a chance at the championship at Irwindale last year. Exactly. It, it would have, same thing, it would have had to have been a perfect scenario, but it, we've seen it happen before. Uh, but yeah. I mean, that's when we saw Chelsea rooting for Chris, right? So, right. Like, like <laughs> it was a, it was, dude, Irwindale last year was a trip, yeah. man. Like, just, you know, as Jared says, you know, cats chasing dogs. And <laughs> like, it's just, it was, it was nuts. But I, I expect something very similar. And with that, um, Osbo and Manoa could meet in top eight. So, so that'll be interesting. Could, yeah, could come down to that. I think if he beats him there and then wins the championship, same thing. I have another math. I'm, I'm doing that for people to leave comments. I swear yeah, that's why. They'll let you know. Uh, oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Will they ever? Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's a really good one. Seeing, I mean, Shanahan's a, is an easy one to, to kind of keep an eye on. Um, ben Hobson, it seems like they finally get that car dialed. Yeah. It just just another really, really good wild card. Uh, what's what's kind of cool is uh, flipping over to the seating bracket, Von Gittin versus Dean Carney. So I believe Dean is coming back uh, for this round. Yeah, that's what I that's why I heard I he's coming back and isn't Forrest going to be there as well? I believe so. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So, and then Joao Berrion has been gone. He had some things in Brazil. So from my understanding, we will have a full set of seating brackets. Bracket. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Von Gittin, Dean Carney, that's wild. And then Forrest Wang, Ryan Literal. That, I mean, you got the kind of the two big style drivers yep. against each other. <laughs> Jay-Z That'll versus be, RB. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, let's go. damn, yeah, you're right. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be fun. It's, there's, just some, there's just some really, really good battles lined up. And, and now, now that the, I think the CD bracket is filled out more and 
I know there's there's going to be a hundred conversations about that and what they need to do and what can change and stuff, but this is, in my mind, the ultimate version of it. Right. Um, it just gives you like a little bit, uh, not to look forward to, that's kind of the wrong way to put it, but just like, I don't know, it's like watching, we're, we're hockey, we're hockey guys, right? We like, are it's like watching people. your favorite hockey teams and knowing the matchups beforehand, like when, you know, the, K- yeah. the Kachuk brothers go against each other, you know, like you, you know what's coming and... I don't know, a little bit extra excitement in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's good and and there's something you you haven't been to Irwindale before, right? No. There is something oddly magical about that place. I don't I'm not a woo-woo person. I'm not I mean, I'm not spiritual, I'm not yeah. religious, and I'm not any of those things, but damned if there is not a feeling when you walk under those bleachers and see all the champion flags, you're like, oh, just wait, you're gonna do it, and you're gonna be like I get it. I, I get it. Like you, you just, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, I, you, you can hear it. You can feel it. Like there's an echo when the cars go around the track. There's uh, just a feeling when the fans go off, like it's just so crazy. It's it. Yeah. It, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm more excited for you than I am for myself to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Thanks. <laughs> I kind of just want to like be there. It's, I don't know, it's, it's like when you buy your kids Christmas presents. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You're more excited to see them unwrap it and they're like the smiles on their face and yeah. No, I, uh, I'm definitely excited for it. Uh, my wife's coming with me and she's been like way more excited than I have because <laughs> I've just been tied up with, with car stuff and, and the shop and the podcast and everything. So it uh, hasn't really all sunk in yet, but I know that yeah. uh, come practice on Friday, I'm going to get pumped up. I'm actually like really excited for Friday, more than that, the behind the scenes stuff, the stuff that I don't see on the live stream. Mm. Uh, gonna go buy yeah, some drivers pra- and practice is sick. And I think, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you've kind of met a lot of the drivers either just coming to events with me and stuff like that. And, you know, there, there's there's friends that we both have that it'll be cool to go and see. Uh, yeah, and PRI, watching practice I've met a few, so. Yeah. Uh, practice, I'm, you know, happy to, to provide the tour of the booth. There's really nothing exciting. It, it's just two sweaty chairs and some headsets. And, and the good thing is we're doing this episode right beforehand, so all the drivers will remember my face when they're upset <laughs> about all the clips that I pick because I'm the guy that picks all the clips that probably upset them. So Th- This is true. This is yeah. true. Yeah, Kyle. Uh, Come right up. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, Kyle <laughs> is the gentleman that picks the, picks the clips. And uh, we send them to FD ba- basically unedited, and then uh, their team is the one who puts like the overlays and – Sometimes we'll the footage them, and stuff, but, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Kyle, Kyle is the master of pulling the best one minute or less <laughs> out of these episodes. I mean, the, the way that I see it, if, if, if I think it's interesting or if I think it's funny or quirky or whatever, there's a good chance that every other fan is going to think the same thing. Mm-hmm. But I know there was a few that I pulled where I'm like, boy, I don't you've, know if he's going to be excited about this. <laughs> you've run a few by me. You usually mark them in red. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You'll be like, hey can you just take a look at this and make sure this is cool? And I'm like, Hey man, yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think I've ever really even asked to pull anything out. No, I don't think so. And at the end of the day, FD approves it. So it's on yeah. them, right? Yeah. We don't give them a lot of time to approve it, but they approve it. Too bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's going to be good. I mean, it'd be weird to kind of have the end of the season. I think you and I've talked about it, Jay, you, I mean, with Jay as well, uh, plan for, this year we'll do we'll do the or I mean this episode before Irwindale we'll do the Irwindale podium show I that'll be the podium of the event I don't want to take anything away um, from the championship one probably be separate right yeah and then I'm I'm debating do I do the top three and have the top three together or do I just do the champion and do a champion episode because like I don't know I I really don't know how I want to play that yet. I mean, at least I'll be there to help run around with cameras and stuff. <laughs> yeah. If you need. Well, I think the the champion episode I'm going to do separate, even if I have to try and figure out how do we do this, you know, the the software remote. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't sorted that out. And then we've got a couple of guests that are lined up. There's a couple that want to record at Irwindale. So I might get a few of those done the Sunday's kind of open because the banquet's on Sunday night so that day there's a few people like hey why don't we just do it then and I'm like cool I'm just gonna bring a camera and microphones into a hotel room this doesn't look weird at all <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah just, just have strangers in a ro- case and that's it 
Yeah, just strangers rotating through my hotel room with while well, I have a camera and <laughs> yeah, microphone set up. I, yeah, probably not the best look. Nah, nah. Sorry, Doubletree. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think... Now we know think, where to find I, you. Yeah, I, th- I think we'll end up doing that. Just there's certain people it's very hard to nail down where you can get three or four hours because realistically you need at least two, if not three. That's right. So yeah, um, those those would be fun. It's... It's weird doing a remote podcast with a headset, but I think it's the way to go. Because, like, the audio consistency is the same. I was going to say, like, they're so consistent. Uh, yeah. I mean, I prefer, you know, camera, microphone, separate, all that stuff. But mm-hmm. it definitely, like, just from listening to them, you can't beat it. Yeah. It's, it gets people, people get a little weird in the beginning with it. They're like, oh, what do I do? I'm like, no, it's great. Because now you can talk with your hands. You don't have to worry about hitting anything. You have to worry about hitting the table. You can hit the table and it won't do anything. So... Yeah. There's a lot of that, benefits to them. That is one thing that we came across a lot, uh, just to go back to yes. all the problems we've had with podcasts. <laughs> table hitting. Is, yeah, because the mics sit on the table and so many people bang the table. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Jay's really good at getting most of it out of there, but yeah. it's just one of those things where it's like, every time I see it, I'm like, can, can, you, can you stop? And, Some of my like favorite notes, because, okay, so uh, Jay's going to listen to this, obviously. Jay only knows drifting because of, of my introduction to drifting over the years. Like, I don't know if he's been to an event. I really need to take him to an event next year. I think yeah. uh, maybe that's what we'll do is we'll, we should do a group trip next year with, with all of us. We'll go somewhere uh, where we can drive, put him in the passenger seat. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. Right. Uh, maybe we do New Jersey because you guys could, in theory, drive down to the, although he's up in Muskoka, he can meet you. And then you guys yeah, you could can in ride theory. with me. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. We do New Jersey and then we do Pro Bro Down after we can put him in a car. That could See, be cool. That sounds like I'm signing up for Pro Bro Down, which it is sounds perfect. Like it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jay will like send notes back about drivers and he, and he will pull out things in the audio that we don't even catch where he'll like weird, weird things like knowing that they have a dog, but like the dog is barking so far in the background. But, you know, obviously he's got crazy headphones and, and incredible sound equipment. Or, or the uh, storm. What, uh, yeah. Who was it with the storm? Uh, was it Derek Madison? No. No, who was it? Jack Davis. Oh, had a storm guy. Uh, Lick lighter, wasn't it? Oh, might have been. Might have been. Yeah. yeah. It was like an insane storm. And that was it. He, it was, yeah. yeah. And he was like, he's like, oh, man, it was such a pain to pull the storm out, but it sounded so cool. And I'm like, you could have left some in, man. He's like, I left a little bit in just to like, you know, like make it, make Get it some sound. Vibes, yeah. 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 Or, or pen clicking. If anybody starts clicking a pen, he just, Dude, he'll message me. He's like, bro. I took like, everything <laughs> off of my desk because I was like, if I click a pen, one, he's going <laughs> to yell at me and you're going to lose your mind. <laughs> I literally, like if you saw my desk right now, I took my pet, my pad of paper off and, here I, and my glasses. I fiddle, I fiddle a lot. And yeah. I mean, you guys know it. So, but yeah, it's, uh, uh we gotta get, we, we should get Jan on, on the show and just get his perspective on drifting yeah. at some point. Be like, yo, this is just, just, just what, what do you, from what you know now from, from this, you know, just main line of content, what do you, what do you think about drifting? You should get him to explain drifting to somebody else just with the context he has from you and the listening to the show. That's a good way Just of like doing for it. the comprehension, right? Yeah. I believe he watches now. I, I'm fairly certain that he watches the events so he can kind of get an idea of like what's going on. So we've, we've, we've converted him, I believe. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I can't wait to get the notes back about this show. And you'll be like, bro. <laughs> he's like, stop talking about me. Stop talking about me. <laughs> yeah. He's, he, oh, man. Actually, shout out to Jay. He, uh, he recommended these headphones and I love them. So. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, same thing, Mike set up and everything else. Yeah. He's been the, he's been the go-to. So he, he picked out a lot of the sound equipment and, uh, same thing with the, the, the mobile stuff. So, I mean, we but, shouldn't be surprised that the audio guy has good taste in audio equipment, but you know, it's one of those things where like you get a lot of recommendations and my previous, you know, headphones and mic I didn't like and people swore by it. So, yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering if he can, if he's going to pick up my daughter snoring behind me. I can't hear it. No, it's okay. It's okay. But wait, so the, the old <laughs> studio was in a, a set office. This one is like in my house. I mean, I don't even know if you, if you want to like edit at some point and pan just over there. I can leave you a marker. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's just my living room over there. But these mics are, the pickup field's pretty, uh, pretty tight. But It's pretty small. A, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to know as we get back on this, but. I'm in a really <sighs> tiny room that doesn't look as small as it is on camera. Fair enough. There's, there's nothing over there. It's a wall. And no ventilation either. <laughs> no, it's warm. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can only, so I, it'll, it'll be, don't worry, it'll be a short episode because Kyle will it, start sweating profusely. To be honest, it was chilly earlier, so like, I'm, I'm not doing too bad. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked a lot about Jay. Let's talk, talk about you for a little bit. Let's, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people know you, uh, but also a big drifting fan, clearly. <laughs> Car fan, like, first and foremost, that's how you and I met and know each other. Yeah, uh, protégés. Yeah, let's go Mazdas. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, definitely into drifting. Um, I've been drifting for six years. Um, what I would call drifting for six years. Um, I do a lot of sim. Like, mm-hmm. my sim's right back there. So, I spend an awful lot of time on the sim. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Just a big drift fan. And, I, I like, that's what's so fun about doing this podcast is, one, I get the info before everybody else. Um, but I learn from it and like, I've picked up so many tips because I have to listen to these episodes, have to, because I listen to these episodes, <laughs> you know what I mean? Freudian because I, slip there. <laughs> yeah. Because I listen to these episodes so intently, like I pick up on so much stuff that the drivers talk about and, and all of the common themes. I'm like, when I hear something three, four or five times, especially by a driver that you've seen progress through, we've been doing this, what, three years mm-hmm. that you've seen them go from you know, prospect to pro and then to doing well in pro, you're like, okay, well, hey, this is something I need to do or I need to look at doing so. And I think too, a lot of people listen to podcasts very passively, whereas you have to listen with intent because you're actively working on it. <laughs> exactly. So you you probably pick up on so many little things that most people who, you know, just listen when they drive or, you know, it's background noise or whatever uh, may miss. So Well, I listen to it basically three times. Right. Like I listen to like because especially when I'm picking clips, I listen to it again to make sure I heard what I heard and mm. I mark it. And then when I've done the whole episode, I listen to it again. So it's like two to three times. So uh it, things get drilled into your into your mind. And that's where I mean, you know, I've been pretty vocal about what I think of sim drifting and how important it is. And mm. in the past two years, the amount of drivers that have talked about how it's helped them progress has just made me put more hours on the sim. So I don't know if you knew this or not, but uh, tickets are on sale for FD, and uh, I get a way that you can save a little bit of money. So when you're buying your tickets right before checkout, there's a little box that says like coupon code. Put in FD podcast. Boom. Saved you some money. Don't believe me? Go try it. Seriously. Go do it. See what happens. Yeah. I We're really in an undeniable state with that. And really one of the... the we can we can look at FD and, and all that stuff, and that's great. I know it's the FD podcast, but we've we've kind of just you know taken it over. <laughs> One of the, the biggest things is is you recently got into like your first pro am level car right. and within minutes you were fine. Like it just you were good. Yeah, like again, like we built it actually it's the first like proper drift car we'll say I built. Like I had a G thirty five before and an E forty six, but this was the first ground up build. Um and using sim experience plus stuff I've learned off of the podcast from what people say works and and doesn't work and what to do. Like I was able to build a car that was fairly easy to drive and then through sim practice head out to the track and all I needed to do was make, it sounds silly, but make the car feel more like the sim. And I was, Mm -hmm. I was right there. I was, you know, driving just like I was on the sim and I could tandem pretty close. um, And everything was for the most part, transferable right like it was it was like i i knocked two years of seat time mm-hmm. off so and took all the grip out of the car <laughs> that's where i started right and <clears throat> yeah yeah that was the first thing i learned i mean because it's the same with the sim i don't start with with grippy tires so i was like well there's no point in taking this uh this car so uh, for reference it's a frs gt86 whatever you want to call it uh with an ls so 400 horse um, just a basic grassroots pro am level car, so decent amount of power, but not too much. So I went out with, you know, skinnier tires, low grip, got the feel for the car, and then started dialing it in, just like I would on the sim. And and kind of the sim also gave me the tools to know like when the car was doing one thing, how could I fix it with the tuning? Right, like I was having trouble with basically toe in the front end, and it was just a couple quick, quick fixes in the pits, and boom. Car feels great. Yeah. Yeah, I think even just the... Uh, we we talk 
a lot about just putting in the seat time and the driving, but uh, testing and adjusting things and fixing alignment stuff or, or trying different things via sim car setup wise is, is maybe something that's not looked at enough or talked about enough. But because in the sim there, there's no consequence, right? Like yeah, <clears throat> you can try all sorts of stuff and, and everybody has their ideas of what things will do. And of course there's a, there is a bit of a blueprint to that, but also like it's so expensive and hard to try this in real race cars that on the sim you can like I don't have a team I don't have a a mentor a taka or somebody to kind of tell me where to go so it's like on the sim I could just go what happens if you know I tow in the rear like crazy but raise the raise the tire pressure so it was kind of like being able to do that for hours and hours and hours and and see the results on the sim once I got to the track like realistically my track car, I've only made two small toe adjustments in the front so far and then a couple of clicks on the suspension and we've got it driving okay. Like, mm-hmm. not competitively, mm-hmm. let's say, but like for just a fun day, it drives really well and we've had to do very little adjustment because I knew where to start. I knew kind of baseline settings on where I wanted to be based off of the sim and, of course, other people who have, you know, kind of laid out a bit of a template or a recipe, but... It's just, it's invaluable that little bit of experience of knowing what, you know, adding a little bit of shock to it does, or again, the why fight the car, take the grip out, make sure everything else works and then start adding the grip in. So you're not fighting it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you can uh, cut corners is not the the term I want to use, but fast track. Yeah. Fast track. Just save so much time. Just Knowing the track, knowing the car, knowing the alignment, trying different things, seeing what suits, see when the car wants to self-steer, when it doesn't, <clears throat> how much tow-in can I put in, how much dampening can I put in before the car gets to a point where it's doing something I don't like. And it may not be, it may not relate perfectly because suspension's different, real world is always different, but it at least lets you know what you don't like or what you do and what direction to head in. And that's exactly it. Like, like I knew that... The- the, the chassis that we chose, I know that it, it has its shortcomings, but the the things I like about it, I knew from the sim because like mm-hmm. I would try 10 different models and they all had the same characteristic, like the snap, the snappy transitions. I like that. Like I like to drive like that. And then getting in the car and it doing exactly that against somebody with a four-door BMW who was transitioning slower, right? Like mm-hmm. it just all kind of worked how it should, which makes sense because it's a simulator, not a game, but it's also surprising how close it can be if you put mm-hmm. the time in to have a proper sim setup or, you know, like actually dial it in. Or just spend the time practicing and not yeah. kind of screwing around. Like there's a, there's a lot to be learned just, just having fun and, and banging doors with friends. But I also know how much time you put in actively trying to get better. And and I think that's a, a big difference. A hundred percent. Like Like we have nights where we'll just hop in cars and just try and smash around but I've also uh, gone on with FD drivers <laughs> and helped them practice before rounds right like in the sense of not that I'm at that level of driving but just in the sense of like okay like what do you want to do and I'm helping they, you know I've had a driver say okay I want you to drive a little slower here so I know how to chase that or mm-hmm. uh, and go back and forth so it's that's what's been so interesting and kind of the uh, the little bit of uh, privilege I get from the podcast is being able to have those connections and uh, and then hear from the drivers, you know, kind of like their experience of sim to reality, we'll call it. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's just a, a very different experience too. I, I mean, I've never driven. I'm I'm not a sim driver. I know I need to get into it. You've actually been the person who's probably pushed me more than anybody. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I I just hearing more and more about it. I, I feel like a broken record, but there's just, there's something there. There's just something undeniable about it. And I do think that seeing, uh, I mean, I don't know how many of the judges really watch a lot of sim drifting, but there are judges all over the world that, that judge sim drifting and it sets a particular flow and a particular style that that's very agreeable. It's, it's very nice. It's, it's cool. So when you see, Somebody like a Manoa come over, or or uh, a Sorensen as well, who who tries a fair bit. Um, you know, they they can take what they know from there and then adapt it over, and they go, 
well, I do well in the sim or I, I judge, I get judged well doing this. If I can make the car feel the same way, why wouldn't I? So, and it's what's familiar. So we just, we've all been wrestling these things to try and get them to do what they want to do, get, uh, get the car to do what we want them to do, as opposed to kind of listening to the car and doing what it wants to do. That's exactly it. It's learning how to listen to the car, right? Like, and, mm-hmm. and I think that that's the, the biggest advantage. Like, There's a reason why it's used so widely in F1 and rally, and, and, and yeah. now it's coming over to drifting. The, the hardest part was to get simulators to properly translate the, the sliding effect and the, the side, side bite, like side grip, but mm. how, it's, how far it's come is kind of crazy. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, you have a pretty uh, intimate relationship with with motion rigs now, so <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I sounded I've terrible, installed... but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that intimate, but I, I yeah. have traveled around um, installing uh, five and six degree motion sims. A friend of mine is a uh, distributor uh, for a popular brand, <laughs> and uh, so I've actually been able to help them tweak the settings to feel more realistic because. Mm-hmm. While I've been on regular motion sims, uh, and I won't name any brands, but there's a particular one that a lot of people use, I didn't find it translated the the sliding motion properly. Like you need to actually slot, like twist in the seat, like get that yaw motion. Yeah. So the the five and six degree simulators give you that snap from one side to the other um, that is really kind of hard to replicate, and what takes most people out of the immersion. Um, so it's 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 cool that those are becoming more available. I don't want to say more affordable because <laughs> they're not. I don't. I've installed some pretty pretty crazy ones in some pretty awesome houses, but most of those people are not what I would consider uh, affordability seekers. Yes, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we're. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that just a, a direct drive steering wheel was a very expensive item to buy and now you can get them relatively inexpensive. I mean, at least half the cost of what they were three or four years ago. And yeah, they're, they're good. So I don't think it'll be long before we see a mass production of motion rigs and that becomes kind of the standard and more and more drivers will be in them and the progression will just get better. I mean, we're only, we're only going to be as good as the tools that we get to use. So. And I would say like specifically in, places that have uh, less than ideal driving conditions, like in yeah. Florida and California and southern states where your driving season is pretty much full year-round, it's less of a, a big deal. But for myself, I mean, you know where I live up in, up in the north, the Great White North, I don't have a lot of tracks around here to begin with, and our driving season is so short that without the simulator, I would have a really, really tough time. So being able to invest a small amount in a sim, whether it's two, three, or $5,000, pays off with me not wasting track days trying to learn the basics, we'll say, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that's cheaper than going to the track, you know, 10 times. Even if you were to pick a a, a really expensive motion rig, a $40,000 or $50,000 motion rig, that, if you can get it close enough to reality, it's cheaper than running a pro car. Like, you, you yeah. the amount of the fuel and the, and the the breakages and the tires and and the crew and all that stuff you would save that so quickly so i could see in the next 2 3 years many of the big uh the big teams having a full motion sim in their in their pits uh for in between practice sessions yeah i don't i don't think it'll take long where they're you know installed in trailers and rolled out and put on the ground kind of thing or bolted in place or whatever i really i really don't I mean, the same thing. Look at F one, right and yeah. yeah, where there's there's almost no reason at this point. So I'm I'm actually well. I mean, you you see the activations at FD. You see drivers, you know, doing some of the activations, but a lot of them are are still practicing and training and doing that. I I don't think it'll be long before pretty much every rig has a, some sort of sim setup that's either there or available to them, where they can go in and just turn some laps and get ready or make adjustments or, hey, it's uh, yeah, twenty degrees colder. Yeah, and that it's one to one to their car. That's yeah. the other thing, right? Like where it's not just they're sitting down for fun. Where the handbrake is in the same spot as as their FD car, where the seating yeah. position is as accurate as possible, the steering feel is so that it's it's one to one trading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not we're not far off. We're really not far yeah. off. There's there's so many things that we can adapt from other sports, and 
uh, it just, you know, we're a young sport, so it's going to, it'll, it'll take a little bit of time. It takes time and money. That's it. It's, it's funny, like how quickly you forget how young the sport is until you start talking about stuff like that. Or we've had many conversations about the sponsorship side and, and when you compare it to every other motorsport, we are so young. So it's no surprise that yeah. there are these growing pains and, and we're kind of right on the edge, I feel, of where it's going to blow up. It's what's, I know I talk about F1 quite a lot, but there was a recent interview with um, the old uh, team principal of Alpine where he was talking about where they didn't have the money to pay the team. Like Williams, which is one of the most legacy F1 teams ever, had a while where they couldn't pay staff members. So I do think that these issues we see with funding and money run deeper than just drifting. They, they're, they're in every sport. We, there's a bunch of stuff going on right now, obviously with NASCAR and um, how that business model is and who's making the money and who's not. You're always going to spend to your means, unfortunately. Like, you know, I... Uh, you know, I, I I always feel broke no matter how much money I'm making. Just, <laughs> I think that's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just the toys yeah. get bigger and more expensive that's, and more frequent. Yep. That's it. So, yeah. There's there's you know people out there that are you assume are making tons and tons of money that are probably struggling to pay bills that you couldn't even think of. <clears throat> and I think that's just like part of the the optics of it, right? Like it has yeah. to look that way so that. Yeah. Otherwise, why would people, not why would people, but less people are going to want an autograph from a guy if they think he's struggling. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. I mean, the amount of money I spend in dry cleaning on these hats, man, it's it's tough to keep up. So <laughs> <laughs> I've actually and, had this one, I've let this one ride for a while. So, And now it's, I can't wear teal teal toques anymore because you took it over. So. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I, I, I stole it from you. I stole it from Lorette. I've stolen from all these people, apparently. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no intention. This, this, I had no intention whatsoever. Like I legitimately have like a teal duke from whatever ten years ago, and it's just I'm like I want to throw it out. My wife's like, "You're keeping it, just in case." All right. <sighs> yeah. Well, you should bring it, Tefty. <clears throat> <laughs> I have one of yours as well. I'm, dude. I'm I'm sweating here. So <laughs> <laughs> at FD, I'm not putting on a two. <laughs> oh man. Um. I don't know how I'm going to transition this. I was going to go sweating. Uh, there was something <laughs> you and I talked about ahead of time that we definitely wanted to, to kind of bring up. Uh, race suits in race cars. Yeah, on on the grassroots level, like, or the... I, I hate using the word grassroots all the time, to be honest, but um, on level. the amateur level, amateur, amateur? level. Amateur, uh, <laughs> amateur. like amateur. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so for full transparency, as J- Jacob knows, and some people may have seen... Uh, with my new build <laughs> on one of our test sessions, we actually had a pretty serious fire um, at a at a grassroots event. We, long story short, we had a an O ring pop out um, and spray fuel everywhere while I was in the middle of a lap. And when the car backfired from a downshift, it engulfed the car in flames, and I had to climb out, grab my fire extinguisher, and do all that stuff. Everybody's fine. I'm fine. The car uh, made a glorious recovery. But what it brought to light was how um, unprepared, even though I'm a fairly prepared person, how unprepared we were for something that catastrophic, because you wouldn't think at a weekend drift event that an entire car is going to catch on fire. But Mm -hmm. realistically, Mm -hmm. it happened so unbelievably fast that had we had more fire suit not even necessarily a fire suit, but like a, a Nomex uh, undershirt or something, a long sleeve, we would have had no injuries at all. Like luckily I had gloves on, so I didn't didn't get too much damage on my hands, but I have a I had a second degree burn on my arm. I had one on my face uh, because I didn't have my visor down, which is another no-no. Um, but it was just, it was insane to see that after that happened, when we were driving through the pits and unloading the truck, we were watching people taking ride-alongs in, you know, people were hopping in in short shorts and Crocs and, and all this stuff. And, and I'm not throwing the, um, the facility under the bus because this happens everywhere. It's, it, you wouldn't think that, like, that's going to happen. But, mm-hmm. like, how can we make it acceptable to wear, not necessarily a race suit, but 
safety gear at these low level events without being feeling ridiculed. Like when I went back to the track uh, on Saturday, I had thought about getting an FIA suit and I was like, am I going to be that dork that shows up with a 400 horsepower car mm. running the cheapest tires that we have and have a fire suit on? But then I also thought like, man, like the last time was really bad and it, it was, it came out of nowhere. So I just found an inexpensive flame retardant shirt. You know, I, I already had good gloves. I bought race shoes, kept my visor down and everything was was good. But it's like, I just wanted to kind of bring attention to like the fact that nobody thinks about stuff like that. Like even driving with half helmets, like the half face helmets, mm -hmm. that could have been a problem if uh, myself and my passenger had half face helmets. I normally have a beard. <laughs> Most of it burnt off. So um, from just having my visor open. So yeah, like I don't know even how we go about doing that. Is does, is that um, safety companies jumping on board to help sponsor these small events? Because safety gear is not, not cheap. I mean, neither mm -hmm. is your life, but that's all where it starts is, you know, uh, even like a Simpson fire retardant uh, Nomex shirt is 200 bucks or $180. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think just trying to lower the barrier to entry would be good. That would make it easier. And if a, if a company jumped on and made a hundred dollar jumpsuit, right. Uh, that's a huge step up. I know I used to drive my, my dad uh, as a fire. Well, I mean, he's retired now, but was a firefighter. All of his uniforms had to be Nomex. So I would drive in Nomex pants because it's not, it's not completely fire retardant, but it's enough that in, in your scenario, in the, the five flash, seconds, right? yeah. yeah, in the five seconds, they're not going to catch fire. They're not going to melt. They're not going to melt my legs. I'm, I'm in a decent spot. So something like that would, would obviously be good. Or even just, just, you know, being aware of the material of the clothing that you're wearing and what sort of fire rating it, it has. And but, not just for yeah. yourself, like your passengers too, right? Like we had, we had talked about it. There was, a, I mean, you know, my friend that was in the passenger yeah. seat. Uh, he was sitting there because my wife was supposed to be in there and she was in shorts, a t-shirt and all that stuff. And the way the fire came in, her legs would have been just, oh, it would have been just burnt, issue. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to get lit up in the comments for my car, which is fine. But um, the car was not dangerous by any means. We had the firewall sealed. We had everything done as, as well as possible. It was a, a freak compatibility issue that caused this and literally the the flash is what did all the damage the the two mm -hmm. seconds of the car being engulfed in flames the sustained fire that's that's the part you, you can get out of the car you have your fire extinguisher um which i have other opinions about that as well yeah. but you that stuff is where you know everyone thinks okay well i can get out of the car it's just it's that initial flash to, to so maybe it's a company like a clothing brand or something like that that makes fire retardant long sleeves that are fifty dollars not a hundred that don't look silly or maybe it's you know uh, less expensive driving gloves or something like that yeah yeah it's just just small things that that you know just to be mindful of even just keeping your visor down right stops the flames from getting in it's not it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so really, silly, like flipping your, like I flipped my visor up because the cabin filled with smoke like 10 seconds before it lit on fire. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it did and I burnt my face and all this stuff and everybody's like, you didn't have your visor down? I'm like, I always have it down. <laughs> and I lifted it for- It's the one time, man. It's the one time. Yeah. yeah. Safety, safety gear is not there for every day. It's for the one time you need it. Yeah. That's it. So 99% of the time you never need it. And that's the, the, the biggest hope is that you never have to, you know, pull the fire extinguisher. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, I'm obviously happy you're all good, and you got a new wiring <laughs> harness put in it, and had that car up and running in a couple of weeks, which is wild. But yeah, uh, three weeks from the incident till driving again, so two weeks of work. I took a week off because I didn't want to look at the car. I had my burns healed like super fast, but that's because we took took care of it properly. But uh, yeah, that's our our weekend session was our first proper test day after the fire as well. Um, and yeah, it was like. I don't know. It, it was so um, rewarding to go back to the track and end the season because our driving season is pretty much done up here. So like end the season off on a high and not 
on fire was pretty good. So mm -hmm. I do have a funny story about that. So you know the track we went to, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're in the pits and there's not a ton of photographer or media, uh, photographers or media people out there. And some older gentleman came up, super nice old guy. And he came up to me. He's like, hey, uh, I have some pictures for you. And I was like, cool. So he hands me one of the car from before the fire. And you can tell because there's no charring on my FDF hood vent or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, oh, awesome. You got one before the fire. And he goes, no, I have one of the fire as well. And I was like, oh, my God, cool. Yeah. Like, except he had this old Canon DSLR, and he printed the pictures out, like, probably at home on a printer. And then he hands me the other two, and he says, can you sign my copies? And I was like, <laughs> for what? So my wife's looking at me. She's like, did he just ask for your autograph? I'm like, uh, I guess so. So I had to just, like, make something up real quick. But you know how awkward I am. So you can imagine the look on my face when some guy wanted me to sign a picture of myself on fire. But... It's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's famous. Famous is famous, right? Doesn't matter how you got there. <laughs> yeah. It was just very a very awkward exchange. But I have two printed pictures of uh, of the day of the incident. We'll call it so. Sick. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing the video and I was like, Jesus, and I, yeah. I hit you up pretty quick. And I was like, uh, Hopefully, you're all good. And you're like, Yeah, a little burnt <laughs> yeah. out, but we'll survive. Yeah, I was pretty burnt up, but we got out quick. That's the other thing, right? Uh, on top of the safety gear was um, now, and I did this a bit before, but now I take an extra 10 seconds to everybody that hops in the car and I run them through the harness and make sure that like I actually made uh, made people take the harness off. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, do it all up. Cool, take it off. Yeah. And he's like, why? I'm like, I want to make sure you can take it off. Yeah. I, I might seem silly. <laughs> and then, yeah, they well, take even, it off. Even little things like just proper pull tabs for the door. If you take your door handles out, like put a, yeah. just put a flight tag on it. Go. That's it. I was like, here's the, yeah. the door handles are still in there. You know, don't touch anything. Don't get out of the car if I don't tell you to, but you know, if it's go time, here you go. And I had bought a second pair of gloves and I made everyone wear fireproof gloves in the car because they like said, I'm a nerd, but I think it's important to like, because we as drivers accept the risk and we know what mm -hmm. the risk is, especially if you're the person that built the car, you know, you know the risk that you're stepping into and people that are, are hopping up for ride-alongs are just so excited to be part of it that they don't know the risk. And we saw that with James Dean's car when it caught on fire. The media person that was in there, he knew what to do. Yeah, he's which a driver. Was, <clears throat> so. But that's paramount. The, my yeah. passenger knew exactly what to do. He was out before I was. I was shutting down the car, but he was out right away. Mm -hmm. Had that been somebody else, a, a random person, a, a young person, they probably would have struggled with with panicking, right? Like it, to get the harness off. So it's just making sure that people have that knowledge of like, don't panic. The harness comes off in two seconds. Kick the door open, climb out however you want. <laughs> but just that extra little mini safety briefing uh, it made me feel better as a driver knowing that the other person knows what to do. Um, but I think it's just an important, uh, I don't know, a trend to start, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it takes somebody talking about it to to make the change. So I don't, I don't disagree. And it's safety in general is something that can be very casual, very lax. And it's just all it takes is one incident to make you realize like, oh shit, that could have been me. That could have been whoever, that could have been a lot worse. And so. I will say too, after the incident at the track we had, uh, that we had at the track, we went back again three weeks later, which was the next event, and they had made changes. And Good. they talked about it in the driver's briefing, and people were wearing long sleeves, people had full full visors on. So it was as as unfortunate as it was to to have our car catch on fire and be that example it was rewarding to see that it enacted a little bit of change. Even if that is just our small little community and just at our track, at yeah. least we knew that it was, it mattered, right? Just, just make like wearing race suits cool. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Just, just, I think we just need to get more ridiculous designs out there and crazy stuff. Like what, that needs what to be Fede part of the style. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Fede's always got crazy suits. I started, this sounds really weird. In Long Beach, I started taking pictures of everybody's racing shoes because... That sounds weird. <laughs> dude, there's some <laughs> sick racing shoes out there. And I was yeah. like, how cool would like an Instagram... Do you remember Ryan Lontane used to take a photo in Long Beach of all the liveries of the cars? And he'd stack yeah. them up and it was like a really cool carousel post. And I was like, I should do the same thing with just shoes. And I was like, it sounds weird. <laughs> I'm not even a sneakerhead. I, I own 
<clears throat> black Converse. I've owned the same type of shoe. I, I know since exactly I was 13. the shoes you've had. Yeah, so. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very simple. I'm a cartoon character is what my wife says. So like just wearing the same outfit every day. Uh, but I was just like, man, these are sick. There's some really cool racing shoes out there. But I, I do. I think doing things like that, making it cool and, and making it kind of uncool to not do those things in the same way that like, you know, we, we basically turn people who smoke cigarettes into idiots now. So how hard is it to do, to take that approach to safety, right? Like yeah. if people, uh, you know, I'm like that with seatbelts, people make fun of me because I'm a, a seatbelt person, mm. uh, but I'll make fun of you for not wearing it. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. you know, like it just goes back and forth. And, and I think that, like I said, as, as long as you can make it cool, and maybe that's what it is, it's going to take brands to to make things more uh, stylistic. Not even mm-hmm. cool is the wrong word, but like something that you can express your style more with a, a flame retardant shirt. Like, you know, I'll spend 50 bucks, 60 bucks to protect from myself from flames and look cool, in my opinion. Yeah. No, it's, uh, so purple, basically. It's not a, not a bad call. Not a bad call at all. But... Cool. Uh, man, anything else? I know we were like, oh, we'll just like run through. We'll do like a 20 minute, <laughs> no. like an hour in already. Yeah, I was, uh, before this, I was like, I don't know if I can talk for this long, but uh, I mean, no, no. The funny part is today. today. You and I had a 40 minute conversation on my <laughs> way home yeah. from work today. Like you just. <laughs> and I was just at the shop too, like before this. I'm like, I got to run home for a podcast. So. Yeah, that's all good. Well. I, uh, I I appreciate all the the work you've put in this year. The work you still have to put in. I mean, you got to edit this. So good luck listening to your own voice. <laughs> it's the it's worst. not fun. No, yeah, it's, the worst. it's not fun. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do appreciate all the the work you and, and Jay have put in. We'll I think we got to get Jay on the episode at, at some point. That'd be fun. <clears throat> Maybe we'll do uh, one on, in the off season. That's just uh, just us talking about our favorite episodes or something. Yeah, that'd be that'd be kind of neat. I know we we talked about putting together a YouTube video showing like exactly how the show goes together. I, we we got to finish that at some point of just like ex- explaining the research and then the recording, all the BS that happens before the show ever goes live and everything goes on afterwards. So I, that put all that on pen, my list. Of all the pen clicking. Yeah, all the pen clicking. Just Jay just <laughs> marking clips and like I swear <laughs> to God, I'm trying to remember who clicked a pen. I think Ryan literal clicked a pen a bunch. I don't even remember. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember which drivers. There's a few. I'm sure he'd give me a list of all the, like, that should be, like, his list of what the things he doesn't like about drivers purely purely based on his audio recordings of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and we'll just we'll just discuss it. We'll just light them That's up. It. That's it. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I'm really, really happy with how everything's going. As far as I know, we got another season ahead of us, so get ready. Hopefully. Uh, I still want to end this season with Andy Luck. I really think that's the way to go. I got a few more guests I want to get in there. Um, you and I are planning on doing the Rumor Mill podcast at PRI, so that'll be kind of cool. Well, as soon as we know the date and time, if you are going to PRI, you can check that one out live, which is a bit different of an experience. Yeah, it's no anxiety at all. No, in our yeah. glass you case of emotions. Bowl. Everybody yeah. walking by and you're talking about them. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah Rad, that was so funny. You're talking shit about Rad Dan. And yeah, we were talking about Rad Dan. He walks in, I was like, I don't know you, but hello. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we've got those podium show, like we talked about a few other ones and then, yeah, I'm thinking probably, what mid, mid to late November, maybe early December, depending on how this season goes, we'll be wrapping it up. I'll let everybody know when the last episode is, we take our Christmas break and then back at it sometime late January, early February. Usually we all need a month off at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So no point in trying to push it through the holidays, but cool. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to drop all your links and stuff down below. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. We'll have to, you'll have to cut your own clip of you catching on fire though. You know that, right? And put it in here somewhere. I, if we're going to have to just talk about you, safety gear. The worst part is it was my wife that filmed the clip. So. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you could hear her, hear her screaming a little bit. So <sighs> she didn't just go dumbass. <laughs> like that's what I would have expected. <laughs> yeah. No, she's not like, happy. Yeah. Like, what an idiot. <laughs> Glad yeah. he's out, but God, Jesus. You know what? To her credit, she kept rolling. She kept, she kept rolling. filming. That's good. She, she saw me get out of the car. She knew I was out of the car. She and that the, the life insurance didn't cover fire. So she's like, he's out. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> life insurance doesn't cover fires. <laughs> Sick. Well, for everybody listening and watching at home, thank you so much for the support. Um, season's not over yet, but uh, we had to kind of wedge this in with all the difficulties we had getting everything sorted. It's just been a 
heck of a few weeks, and uh, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming starting Irwindale, which I'm pumped for. So, yeah, season's not over yet. It's any, like I said, anything can happen. This never crazy know. things happen all the time. So, look at the end of Happy Gilmore. Remember how that ended? <laughs> Same thing. A tower could fall. James Dean can't. Yeah, I don't know. Crazy. <laughs> Jesus. If a tower falls now, football. I swear. <laughs> People are going to yeah. be clipping this. Be I know. I know. Oh, man. Not what I need to know. But uh, thanks again, dude. Thanks again for everybody yeah, watching, and we'll catch up with you next week.